So we will be continuing with our stack and queue playlist. It was starting off. Everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is sum of subarray ranges. Let's understand the problem statement. You're given an array of numbers. You'll have to generate all the subarrays. Once you have done that, you'll have to return the sum of subarray ranges. What is a subarray? A contiguous part of an array. What is a subarray range? It is the difference between the largest and the smallest element in a particular subarray. Let's understand. So if I have to write down all the subarrays, can I start with the first one, which is one? That's a subarray. Can I write the next one, which is one, four? Yes. Can I write the next one, which is one, four, three? Can I write the next one, which is one, four, three, two? I can. What about the other subarrays? Can I say the other one is four? Four, three, four, three, two. Can I say the other one is three, three, two? Can I say that the other one is two? I can. If I have to write down the subarray range for every subarray, can I say for this the greatest element, like the largest is one and the smallest is one? So one minus one will be zero. For this, it will be four is the largest, one is the smallest, three. For this, four is the largest, one is the smallest, three. For this, four is the largest, one is the smallest, thereby again three. For this, zero. For this, one. For this, two. For this 0, for this 1, and for this 0. If I sum it up, the value will be 9, 10, 12, and 13. So the summation boils down to be 13. And this is what you have to return the sum of subarray ranges. So, how do I solve this particular problem? I think I've written down the brute force. You'll have to generate all the subarrays, and you know how to do it. You basically keep a loop at i, then you take a j. So the first subarray is this, then you move j. The second is this, then you move j. There's a third, then you move j. This is the fourth. So in this way, you can generate all the subarrays starting at the first element. After that, you move i. Again, you can keep a j, then you can move j, then you can move j. Again, you end up generating all of them. And while traversing in that subarray, you keep a track of the largest and the smallest. So it's a mixture of subarray generation and finding the largest and the smallest element. So if I have to write down the brute force, I'll start with sum equal to 0, and then I'll start traversing from 0 till n minus 1. So we start generating the subarray from every element. And what I can do is, I can keep the largest element to the array of i initially, and I can keep the smallest element to the array of i. Now if you carefully observe, the element itself is not contributing to the answer. The element itself is not contributing to the answer. Like this subarray is of no use. This subarray is of no use. So what I could do is I could just start off from j equal to i plus 1 and I could head over till n minus 1. And over here, I could update the largest to be max of the previous largest, which is largest and the current element which is array of i. Similarly, I can update the smallest to be smallest minimum of smallest comma array of, uh, sorry, array of j, my, my bad, array of j. Yes. Once that is done, because this is a subarray, like i to j is a subarray. So what I could do is I could say sum equal to sum plus, you could definitely can do a largest, minus, smallest, and then you could end up the first for loop and then the next for loop. Once that is done, you can return the sum. But what about the time complexity? Can I say that the time complexity for this one will be big of n square and the space complexity will be big of 1? Now, this is where the interviewer will not be happy because we are using two nested, like we are using nested loop and I'll ask you to optimize it. So we have to optimize n square. Now this is a clear indication that we are looking somewhere around b go of n or near about that. Okay, so how do I solve this particular problem? Now in order to solve this particular problem, you should have solved the problem which is sum of subarray minimum. Now this is a problem which I have already done in this particular playlist. Please go back and watch it. 
Now that particular problem was from every sub array, from every sub array, you pick up the minimum. You don't do a largest minus smallest. You just pick up the smallest and you add all of these smallest. Got it? So if you can solve some of sub array minimums, you can also solve some of sub array maximums. Can you also solve the sub array maximum? I'll not do this for you. I think you can do this. I think you can do this. So I've already done this, the minimum one. So you can also do the sub array maximum one. Okay. So I know both of both of these problems. I can solve both of the individual summations. I can do that. I think we have solved the problem. You know, you know it, right? Yes. So can I say, can I say this? That uh, what I'm writing over here is like, maybe I'll just erase it. I'll erase this as well. Now, since you know how to solve some of sub array maximum, some of sub array minimum, this problem becomes a cakewalk. Let's understand how. Now this is nothing but one minus one, which is largest minus smallest. Now this becomes four minus one. Now this becomes four minus one. This becomes four minus one. This becomes four minus four. Four minus three. Four minus two. Three minus three. Three minus two. And two minus two. So eventually, when you sum it up, you end up writing one minus one plus four minus one plus four minus one plus so on till two minus two, which is nothing but summation of the largest. Can I say this? Can I say this? This is nothing but Summation of all largest, like all the subarrays largest, minus summation of all subarrays smallest. And if I can do that, I think I've solved the problem. Now, this is nothing but the problem sum of subarray maximums, which you can solve because we've already done an addition of sum of subarrays. Minimums. So whatever answer you get from this one and from this one, you basically subtract and this is what you will be returning. Simple. The problem, like if you solve this addition, you can figure out the maximums and then you could just subtract both of their summations and you should be done. So if I have to write down the code, I'm assuming you have done some of subarray uh, maximum and minimum. So we'll be doing this one. Let's try to do this one. So we have a function and you will be given an array. So all you need to do is you need to write those functions. Assume you write a sum max. So you pass on the array to it. Again, you'll find the complete code. I repeat, you'll find the complete code given below in case still having problem refer to the complete code given below and after this you could write the sum of minimum you would have solved that as well give an array and then you return this and if you remember the individual complexities this was taking how much let's go back and check it out so we've already solved this problem i think yes over here let's taking a big of five in time complexity somewhere around that and a BGO of 5n space complexity, which is as good as BGO of n, I can say, like near about that. So I can again come back to this one. Where is it? Here. So this is going to take BGO of, I'm writing an estimate, which is near about BGO of n and the space complexity. I know it's 5n. I'm trying to, you know, write the nearest one because 5n is much, much better than n square. And this is also going to take the similar amount. So even if I add it up, it's going to be somewhere equivalent, like somewhere near about bigo of 10n, which is as good as bigo of n, because this will take 5n as well. This will take 5n as well. Like if you just add it up, it will be 10n, which is okay. Like much, much better than bigo of n square. You need to understand this. And the space complexity will also be somewhere around bigo of 10n. Again, if you write super clean code, if you don't, uh, you know, reuse stuffs, it will be 10n. And then there'll be bigo of n near about. This is what we have optimized n squared. So it's important to understand concepts because sometimes in interviews, people might tweak the question. Like this was a very simple question. But it was just tweaked, like you just found it tough. If you just think it, 
combining both of them, you'll be like, how do I figure this out? How There's no other way instead of generating all the sub So it's very important to keep all the concepts intact. I hope you understood everything. So if you're still now watching and if you've understood everything, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's finish some of the video. Tell them why. Whenever your heart is broken.